the beautiful Biltmore Hotel here in Santa Barbara. The ocean is in front of us and we have a special guest, Pastor Chuck Reed Sr. Welcome. Well, thank you for having us on the show. We appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, why don't we start to know more about you? Where were you born? Uh, what did you do? Um, uh, family? How did you get in Santa Barbara? Um, yeah, so I'm, I consider myself just to be a guy uh, and grew up in Los Angeles, um, um, the Watts area, South Central area. Um, just an average guy, um, went to uh, junior college at, at Southwest College. Uh, we studied mechanical engineering. Uh, we started working at Hughes Aircraft as a mechanical design engineer. Uh, and I also lifeguarded and uh, coached swimming. Uh, at Hughes? At, or? at Hughes Aircraft. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And uh, for a design, um, how was it? I mean, mechanical uh, I, I, uh, parts, I, I loved, what was it? It was mainly uh, missile guidance systems. Um, uh, the, the, the part that goes into the front of the aircraft that helps the radar stay in place. That's what we did. Uh, and then the, the guidance systems that um, track other aircraft. Yeah. All right, and uh, the swimming, uh, swim coaching was uh, like a side job? Yeah, well, I was always on the, I was on the swim team as a kid, so I was something I always did. And then uh, it, was, it was like one of my first jobs as a kid, teenager, lifeguarding, working the pools in the summer, working the beaches, started managing the swimming pools and then coaching the swim team. Uh, how was uh, the transition to being a pastor? Um, um, it, it was actually something, you know, something I, I always did. Young person working with the, the younger guys, as a high school guy, you work with the junior high school guy, so it, it kind of just evolved. Um, working with the senior pastors there, uh, I was that guy that fixed the microphones or got the pastor his, his uh, water or uh, taught a Sunday school lesson if he was unavailable or preached on a Sunday morning if he was traveling or on vacation. And this evolved to you finding this is your calling. Yes, yes. Being a pastor. Yes, yes, yes. We enjoy it. You know, it's it's really a, a it, it, it's it's a help ministry. Uh, it's being a servant, uh, not so much being the guy in charge, but being um, one thing. Pastor Reese taught me, a uh, you know, senior pastor. He says, Chuck, in this business, you have to be willing uh, to um, to preach a sermon and clean bathrooms all in the same day. It's just the humble, the, the humble servant attitude. Yes, yes. And um, how um, was it that you moved to Santa Barbara from LA? Uh, we were, we, you know, there's an annual conference we would attend every year, and my wife and my, my we were up in uh, Victorville at a conference, and Bishop Williamson, Henry M. Williamson, called us in. Uh, he wanted to meet with me and my wife, and he says, uh, Chuck, we have two churches available. At that time, I was had been an assistant for 30 years. He says, uh, I have two churches available, uh, one in Bakersfield, and I had friends in Bakersfield. I thought, well, great, I could go there. He says, I've got a place in Santa Barbara. Of course, I, don't, I didn't know anybody in Santa Barbara at that time, new to me. Uh, and of course, my wife is sitting next to me. She kicks me under the table. So uh, being the wise man that I am, I, I listened to my wife, and, and here we are. We were signed here in, two, in 2006. Wonderful, and we're lucky. We're lucky to have you and have her here in, in this beautiful city. And um, uh, how about family? Have you got any children? Yes, yes, yes. We've got a, a beautiful daughter. She's um, she's 40. Drives us nuts. Um, she's a teacher. She's got a beautiful grandson. Uh, married for almost uh, 15 years now. Elijah is 11 years old now. Um, great young lady. She's uh, teaching in the Oxnard area. And then we have a son, Charles Jr., um, who's now uh, resting in heaven. Uh, he passed away almost 10 years ago from uh, leukemia. Uh, and it was very, it, uh, it, 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 it enhanced me. Um, it, it was a difficult time, but a glorious time. Did this happen after you moved uh, uh, to Santa Barbara? Two weeks after we moved in town, pastoring a new church, we were, you know, he was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, how long uh, did he, he survive? He battled it for five years, and then uh, he was able, he was going through the aggressive, aggressive chemo and aggressive uh, therapy for about two years. Um, the doctors had kind of given up on him. They said there's nothing else he could do. 
Uh, they sent him home uh, to stay with us. We thought he was it's all the time he had left. Uh, and he started eating his mom's sausages and biscuits oh. and scrambled eggs every morning. And he picked up some weight. He was able to return back to work. Uh, he survived for two years. And one day he got a bad cold. And shortly thereafter, his lungs were uh, compromised. And, uh, and, uh, and, and he died. He passed away from it. Um, two things he told, three things he told me. He says, uh, said, Dad, I need you to take care of Mom, um, finish school, and get that red Corvette. I believe it was a combination of, 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 of all of it. It was holding his hand, watching him take his last breath, feeling him relax and let go, watching the air seep out of his body. Uh, it, it made me realize that there's two ways to ride a roller coaster. You you either ride on it with both hands gripping the bar. Hold on for dear you life. Hold for building life because it's scary, it's shocking, it's something you've never done before. You don't know what's around the next curve. You don't, you don't know what the next drop is going to be like. And then there's the other way to, to ride that roller coaster is with both hands in the air uh, enjoying the ride. Yes. Just free falling yeah. and allowing the yeah. body to go up, allowing the, the, the ups and the downs of this thing we call life, allowing it to happen. Um, in, in the roller coaster, you're, you're a passenger on this thing, and, <laughs> and it, it does what it does. You're really not in control. You're, you're just along for the ride. And, and like you life hope, itself. Yeah, yeah. You hope when you finish that you have your shoes on still. <laughs> <laughs> Just enjoy the ride as much as you could, or just celeb celebrate the good part of it. But be prepared for the ups and downs of that roller coaster. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's pretty much sums it up. You 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 are you are at the um, you you are at gravity's uh, in gravity's hands, <laughs> and so when gravity takes you down. You just go. Your stomach rises up through your chest, and and you you go down, and then it it, it, it does the next roll. It does the next thing, um, but you enjoy it. At the end of it, you when it stops, you're like, oh, we want to do it again. Uh, the thrill of it, and life is a thrill ride, and and we're grateful for the thrill. Uh, that's what makes it so exciting. I realized um, was that you know the loss of a child puts a lot of strain on your marriage. Uh, me and my wife, we've been together almost 40 years now, but we knew that that would put a lot of strain on us. And so what I really tried to do while we were going through the grieving process was give her as much space as I could give her. Um, and, then, and then I realized that in the midst of watching and being strong for her as she's grieving, that I wasn't really grieving. That, that I was this false person on the outside was smiling, but I was broken on the inside. Uh, and then once I, once I realized she was in a comfortable spot, then I think I was able to really open up and share more. Uh, about two years after his death, I wasn't able to share. I wasn't able to talk about it. I was all closed in. Uh, and you deal with the, the, the range of emotions, the happiness, the anger, the sadness, the bitterness, the remorse, the grief. And then five seconds later, you do it all again. Um, and so I, I, I learned how to really just um, those emotional uh, ebb and flow, just like that roller coaster. Uh, to not fight the emotion, but to experience the emotion. Uh, and through that, through that journey, it really brought me and my wife closer together. I think we communicate uh, better now. Um, we give each other space now. We, we also know when to draw each other in. Um, she, is, she is a gracious, very gracious lady, and she doesn't have any problem reeling me in. <laughs> And I think we need that support system. And then I've learned to watch her more um, and just be attentive to her. Um, am I the perfect husband? Well, I think I am, but, but it's, it's still a work in progress. And uh, after almost 40 years of marriage and the loss of a child, uh, every day is beautiful. Yeah. And uh, for some of us, uh, we would say, ah, uh, mourning, grieving uh, is easier for him because he is a pastor. That is a that is a that is a, a, a two-edged sword because um, long before I was a pastor, I was just a guy. 
And so the human aspect kicks in. Um, there's, there is no class that teaches you how to bury a child. We don't, you know, we study math and English and theology, but nothing says this is how you watch your kid die. I, I, didn't, I didn't sign up for that class. So that was difficult. So me and the Lord had a long conversation about that. We, you know, um, and then one day it hit me in a very still, quiet voice. I heard the Lord tell me, Chuck, I took care of my son. Surely I'll take care of yours. And that's when I really got my peace back. I realized, okay, he is in a good place. He's okay. My faith is rewarded in his life and in his death. Um, through his life made me a better person. I always say he was a type of young man that you'd want your daughter to marry. And I thought it was so unfair for someone like that to be taken away. Such a good person, such a great young man. Uh, made me a, he made me a better person. And I thought it was so unfair that that type of person has to go. Um, but it also made me raise my level of humanity and, and try to live up to be the type of person he was. Uh, and, and, and still is, because I think his spirit lives on every time we talk about it. So you cherish the good memories yes, yes. from him, yeah. the, the, a, the, yeah. the, the laughter. Yes, yeah. He was, he was a classic practical joker, so um, there's tons of funny stories about him, and so we, we, we remember the laughs and the jokes. Um, Not so much the the death and the sorrow, but we remember the, the the funny things he did, the smile, the his his movements, his dances, his stories, his 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 his, his energetic smile. Uh, he was kind of those people that when they walk into a room, the room is better. <laughs> the room is the room is bigger. Uh, the party starts when he gets there. <laughs> it's it's going to happen. It's a process that we have to you we, we have to learn to deal with that. I'm not going to be here forever. You're not going to be here forever. So my job, knowing that, is to make sure that I pour as much love into you as I can, and then you pour as much love into me as I can. As a pastor, you think, oh my goodness, you know, uh, I can just pray it away, or I can just, you know, no, give you a sermon. And, and but no, this 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 process, you have to go through each each dirty emotion and each overwhelming tear of joy. You have to allow yourself to live it and to experience and to breathe it. And this is the main thing that I learned from it. As soon as I went from it, I asked the Lord, Lord, why am I going through this? And then a few weeks later, I have a, a friend who loses his son. And then I'm like, oh, I'm here to help him. I've experienced something that he's never, he never experienced. So let me help him through it. So we're all placed here to help someone else. And so uh, that was my, that's what I received from it. My son helped me be a better person in his death. And in, and in my life, I helped to help someone else be a better person. Um, any last sentence you would like to leave your audience with, especially those who are grieving? What would you tell them? The simple, the simple joy of, of smiling every day. The simple joy of sharing your story. Uh, we are all blessed with these unique lives that we've lived in the stories of how we got to be who and where we are in life. And I think it's so important for us to share our story, share our testimony. One thing I, I tell the congregation is tell your story and give God the glory. Tell your story. We tell all have a story, story to tell. And give God your glory. the glory. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. <laughs>